Hi everyone, my name is Trevor Sullivan and today we're going to be talking about Power Events, WMI Event Filters, to find the events that you want to respond to. We're going to assume that you have a basic understanding of Microsoft's Windows Management Instrumentation, Windows PowerShell version 2, and general t transact SQL syntax, which is you know basic select queries that you'd write in SQL Server. We'll start off by talking about the two different types of WMI events. There are intrinsic events and extrinsic events. Now the ones that we're generally going to care more about are going to be intrinsic events. And intrinsic events are WMI events that represent changes to actual WMI objects. For example, this could include the creation of a new process, the Win32 process class. This could include the termination or deletion of a Win32 process object. It could include the creation or deletion or modification of a print job object. So all these are examples of changes to actual WMI objects that exist inside the uh, SIM repository. The other types of events are extrinsic events. And these are a little less common, but they're provider-specific events and what that means is basically that each WMI provider that provides information to the WMI service has to have a custom implementation of a particular event class. Now there's several different example event classes here that are extrinsic classes. You'll see Win32 process start trace, Win32 computer system event, and so on. Now what does a WMI query look like? A basic WMI query looks like select fields or properties from the event class within a certain number of seconds, which is your polling period, and then where keyword, and then criteria. Now a little bit more realistic example would look like select fields or select star, because typically we want all fields, from the event class name, which could be instance creation event, within five seconds, for example, where target instance is a, which is a WMI operator, is a target class. And the target class is going to be the WMI class that we want to capture data from. This could be Win32 process, it could be Win32 print job, it could be Win32 thread, and so on. Now, where did this target instance come from? Target instance is actually a property that's defined on some of the system level event classes in WMI, for example, instance creation event, instance deletion event, or instance modification event. And the target instance actually gives you a reference to the object that has changed in WMI. So if a new process starts up, the target instance would represent the instance of Win32 process that has just started. We'll look at a couple examples to show how this works. Now that we've talked a little bit about WMI event queries, we'll talk about how to use Power Events to create a WMI event filter. The new WMI event filter commandlet or advanced function in the Power Events module is a very simple one. We only have one mandatory parameter and three optional parameters. The one mandatory parameter is the WQL or WMI query language event query that we would like to use to capture events. The optional parameters are the name for the event filter, the namespace in which the events will take place, and the computer name parameter. As you'll see in the note, putting a name is an optional parameter. However, I strongly recommend that you use a name and give it a name that represents its purpose so that you can refer to the event filter in the future. Let's take a look at some example uses of the new WMI event filter function. The first example on this page is capturing events where new processes are created. You'll see we have select star from instance creation event within two seconds, where the target instance or the target object is a Win32 process object. So basically we're saying we want all fields from the creation event class within two seconds. So every second, every two seconds WMI will poll for events 
and then we want the target instance to be a Win32 process object. The second example is a free space changed event query. Now in this query, we want to capture changes to the free space on any disk drives on our system. The Win32 logical disk WMI class represents partition information on a given system. So in this case, we're giving our event filter a friendly name, the free space changed name, pretty self-descriptive. And then our query is select star from instance modification event every two seconds where the target instance is a Win32 logical disk. Now we have a special query on or a criteria on the end of here that kind of customizes where how our query is going to work. In this case, you'll see we have target instance, but we also are referring to a previous instance. Now something that's nifty about the underscore underscore instance modification event class in WMI is that a modification event will actually give you a view of the object before the change and a view of the object after the change. Now obviously the previous instance will refer to the old object and target instance will refer to the new object after it's changed. So in this sample query, we're capturing only instances where the new free space is not equal to the old free space. So this query will not capture changes to other properties about the object such as the volume label or total disk space if you shrink or expand the volume and so on. So we're getting into a very specific query here. We want only changes to free space. The next example on the top here is new print job. We have a query that says select star from instance creation event, so a new instance of a print job, within two seconds, where the target instance is a Win32 print job. So this will get, whenever a new, new print job is created, we'll capture that creation event every two seconds. And again, we're giving it a very friendly name so that we can refer to it in the future as a new print job. The next example is page file usage changes. So we're using the new WMI event filter function to query for changes in the amount of the page file that's currently being used. Again, we're querying the instance modification event class and we're using the current usage property on the Win32 page file usage class in WMI to determine when the change occurs. So we're comparing the new instance to the old instance in terms of its current usage of the page file. And if it's changed, it will return us an event that gives us both access to the new and old instances. The next example here shows how to create a new Active Directory user account. I'm sorry, how to respond to an event where a new account is created. Now this one has a slight twist on it. We're using the instance creation event class and we're querying every two seconds and we're giving it a proper name, new AD user, so it's very self-explanatory. But something new that we have here is we're not using one of the standard Win32 classes. We're using a class called DS underscore user. And DS underscore user does not exist in the same WMI namespace that the other classes we've worked with exist in. So the DS user class exists in the root slash directory slash LDAP namespace. So in this case, because it's on in a non-standard namespace, we simply append the dash namespace parameter and then give it a value of root slash directory slash LDAP. So that's the final example I have here as the page file utilization is a duplicate. So the next steps are for you to download the Power Events PowerShell module at powerevents.codeplex.com. Go ahead and experiment with creating some WMI event filters just to get yourself accustomed to the syntax. And just to start off, go ahead and try out the examples that are provided in this presentation. This will give you a good starting point. Additionally, to find out what else you can do with WMI, there's a great tool from Sapien Technologies. It's a free community tool called WMI Explorer. You can go ahead and uh, go to that URL and download it for free. And go ahead and execute it. And it's pretty self-explanatory. But it just allows you to browse WMI and look at all the different things that you can do with it. There's a lot there, and you can find out a lot of cool things. And finally, 
uh, in another session, we'll talk about how to create WMI event consumers with the Power Events PowerShell module. And the purpose of event consumers is to respond to the events that we capture with the event filters that we talked about today. And that sums up this presentation. If you have any questions, feel free to email me or shoot me a Twitter message. And don't forget to go out to the CodePlex website for Power Events at powerevents.codeplex.com. Thank you.